On this episode of Hot Rod Hoarders, we're featuring a Sox and Martin built Dodge Demon drag car. It only raced for one season and was put away in the shed until 1985. Went missing for almost 30 years before the grandson of the original owner bought it back and restored it to his former glory. Before I dig into the history on this car, I want to remind you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and drop me a comment down below. This Mopar drag car has some great history, and I was fortunate enough to meet the owner, Lee Crowder III. Now his grandfather, who went by the name Freeman, he had this car originally, and he bought it directly from Sox and Martin. This was a brand new car that Sox and Martin bought and built into a brand new race car for the 1971 season. Freeman Crowder was no stranger to drag racing. He actually owned a Chrysler and Plymouth dealership in Harriman, Tennessee, and he was able to get his hands on a BO29 1968 Plymouth Barracuda. That's a factory Hemi race car, and he had Bud Moore drive it for him. They raced at Harriman Drag Strip and other local drag strips, and the car was pretty successful in the super stock ranks. For this new race car, Freeman hired a driver and a mechanic, which turned out to be brothers from Nashville, Tennessee. John and Gerald Livingston. These guys, again, no stranger to drag racing either. They had been racing in super stock ranks for years, and they stepped up into this pro stock ride, and they hit the ground running. They made a trip out west. They ran at the Pomona Winter Nationals. They ran at Irwindale. They came back east. They ran at just about every track you can think of in Tennessee and Georgia. They raced at national meets. They raced at little outlaw tracks. They did match races, they did unsanctioned pro stock meets. They did it all in one season. They really packed in a bunch of races with this car. The car had a 426 based Hemi engine. It had a tunnel ram, two giant Holley carburetors, a four speed transmission, a Dana 60 rear end. This was about as high tech as you could get for 1971. It usually ran low tens at some of the outlaw tracks, which didn't really have a very good surface. But when they went to Rockingham Dragway in North Carolina, the car ran its best time ever, a 982 at 141 miles per hour. If you're wondering where the Tennessee Thunder name came from, John Livingston is actually the one who came up with that because several of his previous cars were named Tennessee Thunder. So when he came on board with Freeman Crowder, the Tennessee Thunder name came with him. Toward the end of the 1971 season, Crowder was already planning for the 1972 season. And unfortunately, this Dodge Demon was not part of that plan. He actually bought one of the most iconic pro stock cars of all time. He bought the Motown Missile, and he renamed the car Tennessee Thunder, put John Livingston behind the wheel, and they went racing in the 1972 season with this car. So the Demon went into storage and it sat there for years. And then when the Challenger was retired, the old Motown missile car, it also went into storage. Those two cars sat there until 1985 when Crowder decided to sell both of them. They both went their separate ways. Ultimately, the Motown missile car was restored back to its Motown missile setup. And then the Demon actually went to Kentucky where it was repainted and ran as the Mountain Mopar and I believe it was just bracket raced, uh, but it had the same wheels, the same stance, the same everything as the Tennessee Thunder setup, but just a different paint job. And from what I've gathered, the car didn't run for very long. It was eventually sold to a guy in Florida, and it sat there for many years. So that brings us to this car's modern era, where Lee Crowder III hunts this thing down. He finds it in Florida, and he's trying like crazy to buy it. He made three separate trips to Florida and back just trying to buy this car so he could bring it back home and restore it. And finally, he was able to make the deal, brought the car home, and he took the thing apart. And him and another guy, his name was Larry Farrell, they did it right. They put this thing back together using authentic parts for the most part. There's a couple pieces here and there that, uh, like the tires, for instance, those aren't original tires but you can only go so far when you're restoring one of these cars. And he wanted it to be functional. He wanted to be able to go to the drag strip if he wanted to. He didn't want this thing to be display only. So he really did it right by mixing those authentic parts 
with a little bit of modern speed equipment as well. So when Lee brought this thing home, the original Hemi engine was long gone. Fortunately for him, his grandfather still had a brand new 1970 426 cubic inch Hemi engine still sitting in the crate. So they took this thing apart and they ended up making it a 472 cubic inch Hemi. They put Eagle crank, Eagle rods, Ross pistons with 14 to one compression. It's got Andy cylinder heads. It's got a wind tunnel ram, two 1050 Holly Dominator carburetors. This thing is serious. It makes about 700 horsepower and it just absolutely beats the ground. It's awesome. Also from his grandfather's collection was the Mallory Super Mag and the Doug Thorley headers, which were believed to be original to this car. Due to rust issues, they had to reskin the quarter panels and they put new door skins on the car. But while they were taking the thing apart, they wanted to sand down some of that paint to see if they could see some of the old paint and old lettering underneath. And when they did that, they were successful. They found some of that Tennessee Thunder lettering underneath on the door. So, since that was a pretty iconic piece of this car's history, Lee held on to it. He still has that door skin. He carries it with him to shows to kind of show the authenticity of this car and show the process of putting this thing back together the right way. Since the restoration was complete, this car has been all over the Southeast United States. It's been to car shows, drag races, nostalgia events. It's been on display in Summit Racing Showroom down in Georgia. This thing has been all over the place. And Lee actually wrapped his enclosed trailer with a really cool collage of old pictures of this car. And it's just an awesome display piece. He takes it all over the place. He tells this car's story, and I love that. I love being able to connect all the dots. And the family history connection is just amazing. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better situation than a grandson restoring his grandfather's pro-stock Sox and Martin built car. To make this story even better, Lee Crowder and Larry Farrell have actually taken this car to the drag strip and they've made some passes with it. Now these aren't wide open, everything you got type of passes, but I wanted to show it here and I wanted to thank Charlie Miller for providing these video clips. He has been with this car through every step of the restoration. He's covered a lot of it on his YouTube channel. You should probably check that out. Uh, he's a drag racer, he's a hot rodder and he's a really good guy. He allowed me to use these video clips and I'm very appreciative. I don't know how you can get much better than a Hemi-powered, Sox and Martin built, pro-stock drag car that raced for only one season and was put away for pretty much the rest of its life until the grandson of the original owner found it, bought it, and restored it and put this thing back to its original configuration. And I hope you've enjoyed kind of following along with this car's history and the process of restoring it and getting a glimpse of what it looks like now. The family connection, the cool factor of the car, the fact that it's a local car to me from here in Tennessee, it just doesn't get much better than this.